What's in this box, Gordon? Hey, this is essentially kind of a replacement for the most popular selling gaming laptop on Amazon. I just reviewed this iteration of an Acer Predator Helios 300, $1,100, great laptop for the money. This replaces it. Difference, I don't want to get my knife all glued up, so I'm just going to use this video card. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's what you do with old video cards, right? You use yeah. the open boxes. The big difference is RTX. RTX. This is our second RTX laptop we've gotten in a PC world. Yes, this is the Acer Predator Triton 500, so I don't screw that up. This is a lab machine, which means uh, somebody else has probably already reviewed this machine, sent it back to Acer, they cleaned off the Cheetos, sent it back out, thus the seal is broken. Consumers would not get the same thing, but it's essentially what you're gonna get. Which is I, why it's probably also loaded up with Windows. And well, it'll have Windows. Yeah. They usually will, you know, Windows will be reset typically. Sometimes it won't be fully reset. What else you get with this? You get your manual, you get another quick guide, you get the cool, look at that premium service. Oh. No oh, stickers? Oh, look at that, no stickers, but uh, probably a power brick in here. Should be the same one, I imagine. Looks exactly the same to me. Oddly, no power cable. No, actually, hmm. that's decently smaller. So on the left, we have the Acer Predator Triton 500. On the right, the Acer um, Helios, Predator Helios. And how many watts is that? I'm gonna guess it's probably 230. Uh, if I can see it so tiny. Uh, I can't read it, but good lord, the, t the writing is so tiny in this thing. Yeah, so 230. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, let me see the end. It's decently smaller. Yeah. All right, nice. so interchangeable, I, mean, it, I believe. They're both probably interchangeable, yes. So, smaller power brick probably means the laptop's smaller. Yeah, we got a nice little uh, black case there. Ooh, Predator. Hmm. Very nice. Look at this. This. Oh, I got that blue. Very nice like blue. blue. It's very compact. Uh, Triton 500, 1080p, 144 hertz panel. Let's turn it on. Uh, eighth gen i7, six core. You can turn off that noise if you don't like it. <laughs> I do BIOS. like it. I like it. 8750H, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, NVMe, M.2, of course, and an RTX 2060. It's not really called a Max P, but everybody calls it Max P. It means the full performance uh, 2060 part. Turbo button? Yeah, and I guess it's a turbo button. Let's press it. Oh, yeah, look at that. So they're telling me, hey, you can't turbo this thing. You ain't got no power. So I'm guessing you plug it in, you get the turbo. Huh. Uh, looks like it's a single color. I don't know if the keyboard is per key lighting. I don't think so. Um, at, least, at least brighter on these caps. Yeah, at least brighter here. But so 144, 1080p, yeah, 144. high refresh. Uh, I do know there is no G Sync. It is Optimus, so you get realistic battery life. I actually don't know the size of the battery, so let's find out. Let's find out. I'm very interested. Um, oops. Got the slash. So essentially, you're telling me that uh, this is pretty close to that one in terms of specs, other than the RTX, specs, right? As far as hardware, oh, actually, hmm, you know, I'm probably wrong. I think people would want to say this is close to the Helios. Helios is fairly compact, but it's big. It's it's five pounds, uh, ten ounces. This is about four pounds, yeah, maybe, four and a half pounds. Flat. Let's see what it looks like. Um, the battery is 82 watt hours. The Helios's battery is 45 watt hours. So you're getting oh, wow. a, a lot smaller battery in the Helios. Even Decent, though it's thicker. Wow. Thicker. So I, I got to say, this is probably a, a spiritual. The main competitor to this is going to be probably MSI's GS65, mm. which is a full flat four pound laptop. Very nice. 
this is a little heavier about 10 ounces heavier but look you're getting gigabit you're getting a usb 3.1 god knows if that's gen 1 or gen 2 10 gig 5 gig fully, uh, fully HDMI. HDMI, probably plugged right into the um geforce card nice. you get your power you get your audio ports check the other side out i do like it you're getting mini display port as well for uh G-Sync support. It's a little hard to get G-Sync really? out of laptops out of because G-Sync doesn't work over HDMI. Wow. Right? So you sort of need display port. Then you got to use Thunderbolt and yeah. Uh, this is actually a Thunderbolt 3 port too. Oh, no way. Yeah, and then we get two more type A's, you know, 5 gig, 10 gig, God knows who what. Could Wait, be. so would you consider the, this a thin and light? I mean, it's pretty damn close. It's pretty, I mean, look right? at this. I mean, I, a, I was expecting it to I, be that big. I really expected this for some reason because I do my. I didn't look at it early. I thought, oh, maybe this is a replacement for this. But this is a competitor to an MS GS, uh, MSI GS uh, 65. If you want to count an XPS 15 in here, I would. An XPS 15 is not primarily a gaming laptop. This does give you a full tilt 2060 part though. Uh, I can tell you the the bottom, the top, the A and uh, D lid, I think they call it. They are aluminum, it's an aluminum body. So what do you, what do you think about cooling on uh, on the Helios versus the, the Predator? You know, I, the Triton I, I'll have to open it up. I, I wanna see if um, they change the heat pipes in this. One of the issues people have complained about with the Helios is overheating. I didn't have any overheating, but it is a little weird because they put all the fans on one side and then you get your GPU, you get your CPU, so no matter what CPU always has to feed through the heat pipe going over the GPU, it's not great. Usually what you get is a, a fan on both sides, so at least the, the CPU can get direct cooling if you're not you know, doing workload. Huh. I don't know what how this is configured. We would have to open it up. I will say it's probably not as easy to get into as far as doors, this one you just, what I love is yeah, thicker. This one's thicker. I actually opened this up. I put in an SSD in here, a, a 2.5 inch SSD. And then you get your memory here. Getting the M.2 is buried down here. You have to pull the whole bottom off. This one, you probably pull the whole bottom off. But I keep comparing it to the Helios because I really thought they would compare. Because this sucker, $1,100 all day, came out at $1,300 all day. It's $1,100 with a GTX 1060 not max q full performance 256 gig ssd this one 1800 dollars and i really thought wow there's a big price markup for the 2060 right but you're getting double the size of the ssd and a very portable laptop with an 82 watt hour battery this really is a competitor to the uh, gs65 the aero 15x and i think they dropped the x the aero 15. this is actually a very good competitor to the aero 15. not really the xps 15 because the xps 15 doesn't have the graphics cojones to run with these laptops this is a gaming laptop that you could actually use every day carry it around yeah, with that's you, so. four and a half pounds that's not bad four and a half all. pounds is not bad let's i just want to see let's see what we get here but yeah a little, a little over, over four, yeah, yeah, four and three quarters, four, four pounds, eleven ounces, but, um, and then you get your smaller power brick. This is really a gaming laptop that you can carry with you. So, but eighteen hundred dollars for eighteen hundred dollars. Right? It's not just RTX though. You're getting a smaller laptop. You're getting this is you feel it. You feel it, the bottom is plastic. The top has some aluminum in it. It's just not the same build quality, I guess, or look. I mean, even the look of this looks like. It's a retro gaming laptop. Yeah, this is this that's looks got some bezels. Much more sophisticated. And you're getting 144, you're getting 1080p. I, yeah. This is gonna be a nice laptop. Eighteen hundred dollars is not bad. I, I'll have to I'm gonna be surprised on the thermals on this, you know. Yeah, so we'll have to see because we know that thermals make a huge difference in all these laptops. We'll be testing it to see how it does. I but you know, I huh. really thought we were gonna see well thousand bucks. Versus eighteen hundred dollars for RTX, but no, it's a different thing because you're you're paying for the you're paying for the the size. Smaller mm -hmm. laptops, thinner laptops, lighter laptops cost more. Miniatures, miniaturization costs more money. So, well, no do you plastic. want to uh, load up a couple benchmarks real quick? Yeah, and we'll see just just some quick performance tests. We're on a couple quick tests and we'll compare the two. Uh, Gordon, we're back, uh, and we have a clarification about the power supply. Yeah, I actually down. I got my magnifying glass out. I read the writing on it. It's actually a 180 watt power supply. This is, of course, is the 
under 180 watt power supply that came with the Helios. This is the one that comes with the Triton. You can see there's a big difference here. Huge difference in thickness. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter, not okay. that much. All right, but, but we ran some benchmarks, and yeah. uh, what, what's what's the takeaway that we're seeing so far, Gordon? So the takeaway is this is a, a 2060, not Max Q, so full power Max P is like people like to call it 2060 card, and compared to the tw uh, 1060 in the Acer Predator Helios 300, it's about 35% faster in graphics uh, in 3D Mark uh, Time Spy. It basically tracks, for the most part, on today's games at about the same level as uh, a GTX 1070. Uh, an overclock 1070 can get a little faster, but generally it'll stand right there with a GTX 1070 that I've seen in much larger a, a, laptops. A full 1070, not Max-Q. Full Mac 1070, Q. not Max-Q. So we're talking full performance. Okay. And that's not bad. So 2060 basically, for same it, performance. Yeah. For 1800 bucks as a 1070 1800 and of course port royal people also want to know because this is a ray tracing benchmark 3d mark uh you can see about 2900 here i will say a 2080 max q in the gs 75 the msi that was about four thousand okay so it's, so it's it's up there so 4100 versus 2900 you know and uh, I will say this, this score in Port Royal compared to some desktop scores that have been reported by PC Gamer, about 35% uh, slower than a desktop, uh, ten, uh, tw sorry, 25% slower than a desktop 2060. So you definitely give up some performance from the clock fall off, but okay. and it's about 30%, 35% slower than a, than a, uh, a 2080 Max-Q. So... We'll have to see how the whole ray tracing landscape shakes out. If performance gets better for one, or what you can really run in games at what resolution when it gets to this level of graphics card. But so, any first indication about uh, how the fans are sounding? If there's uh, any thermals that you're noticing? I overall, it's pretty quiet. It's not loud. I haven't even run it in turbo mode, which I'm going to guess kicks in the overclocking. We can do that now. You can see turbo mode turbo is on. on. And it basically oh. forces fans full speed, probably all the time. Not too bad. And that's about as loud as it's going to get, I think. Not a great sound. You don't want to play like that all the time. But generally, I think it's well behaved. I've seen that in other thin light la laptops that Turing-based GPUs are not, not like these hot monsters people thought they might be. So overall, it's a really nice laptop. This is a solid competitor. And it's looking like it, a solid competitor to uh, GS65, which is definitely lighter, 10 ounces lighter. Uh, and this is very comparable to, say, a Gigabyte Aero 15, which is about the same weight, about the same thickness. A lot of the features are the same, 1080p, 144. You get your camera on top and, uh, you know, full-on ray trace and 6-core Core i7 in here. Really and I, nice. I, I really do think there is something to be said about the the new branding too. You know, the the predator is a little more subtle. You got the blue instead of the red, like on the the guy over here. Yeah. You so know. this is this is the whole red thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, this is obviously a different class at a thousand dollars, but you know, you're still this, yeah. this isn't bad. Uh, the this, keyboard this is not per screen. key lighting, though. Oh, which it is isn't. a bummer. Oh, okay. And it doesn't even look like it's multi zone. I think it's a single zone lighting, which I'm I'm well, okay with. But because when it booted on, I saw like a little. Did it? Kind of wipe across. A yeah. wipe, it'll wipe across, but it's a single color, I believe. Yeah, single color. Yeah. yeah. So you know. Okay. Yeah. Not not a deal breaker. All right. So, but you're gonna do the full full breakdown of testing, and yeah, we'll do a full breakdown of testing. We're gonna open it up. I want to see what it looks like in the inside. One weakness of some of these really thin laptops is they make it impossible to get to the memory. They make it impossible to get to the M.2 drives. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping that when Acer made this, they put the M.2 drives and the SODIMs or SUDIMs on the <laughs> bottom side so you can get to it. But we're going to find out when we crack it open. All right, cool. Thanks, Gordon. Okay.